The content provided in this video is for educational purposes only and is not medical advice. For medical advice, please schedule an appointment with one of our Hope for Healing providers or the appropriate medical professional. Um, so great to have the privilege to be able to go over what ozone is about today with you. Um, and when we think about ozone, um, it's the oxygen molecule. Just let me know when you want yeah. to, start to share the presentation. Perfect, perfect. Um, and so, you know, we all have enough oxygen to live our normal daily lives, but we don't necessarily have the optimal amount of oxygen in order for us to have um, optimal, thriving, vigorous vitality within our lives and for all the days of our lives. Mm -hmm. So there are various factors that contribute to having a lack of oxygen and that optimal amount of oxygen, one of them being um, poor nutrition or the standard American diet. The second one being environmental exposures, that mm -hmm. would be um, things in our water, our soil, um, our air. And the third would be like a sedentary lifestyle. If you're um, a couch potato and not really doing a whole lot of movement, you know, motion is lotion and gets all of the oxygen and blood towards the rest of our body. Um, another aspect that prevents us from getting a lot of oxygen are stressors that could be mental, emotional, or spiritual stressors that stem from relationships, finances, um, politics, all of those things can really steal a lot of the, the oxygen that we need. Um, and then finally, poor sleep. <laughs> we always know and maybe don't necessarily really invest in our sleep, but it is really important. And then some of us may even struggle with health conditions that um, make it difficult to even get oxygen, like yeah. asthma, chronic lung disease, um, diabetes, heart disease, even sleep apnea, where you kind of stop breathing for some time at night or snoring. So um, there are all these different layers that prevent us from getting optimal amounts of oxygen. Mm -hmm. And we have um, a great tool to be able to combat those things, and that's ozone. So we'll go ahead and share the um, slides today with you about ozone. So all about ozone is a triple oxygen molecule. And the way that ozone is made, medical grade ozone, is through um, a specific generator. Um, you use pure oxygen. You can kind of see here, there's two different ways, but you have pure oxygen on the left side um, with the two molecules. It goes through a tube called an electrode, and then electrical current goes through the tube, then breaks up those two oxygen molecules into single oxygen molecules. And then for a split second, it's like that. Then they all come back together and two to 3% become ozone, which is the triple oxygen molecule. And so that is how ozone is made. Um, ozone is an unstable molecule compared to the O2 molecule. And that's where um, ozone gets both its benefits, but also its safety concern. So we'll go over um, the importance of safety with ozone. Um, there are three aspects um, that we'll review today. Ozone, when exposed to the lungs, can be very irritating. So the ozone, we don't use ozone in that way. It can be particularly irritating for people who have asthma or chronic lung disease. Um, otherwise, ozone can safely be applied to every part of the human body except the lungs. And we'll go over those methods um, in the administrations. Uh, there's a long list of those. Um, if it's inhaled, it can cause a coughing attack, but your lungs can typically recover from there. The second part about ozone that's really important is having high quality per mm -hmm. pure oxygen um, only. So you don't want to use room air <laughs> to make um, ozone because room air has nitrogen in it and that can turn into nitrous oxide, which is highly toxic, not necessarily just irritant to the lungs. Um, we, you can get pure oxygen if you have a home ozone generator. Mm -hmm. So we do ozone in our office, but you can also have a home ozone generator. And to get that pure high quality oxygen, you can get a, from like a medical supply store with a prescription from a healthcare provider mm -hmm. or a welding facility. Both of those are pure oxygen um, within the US um, that you can use. Mm -hmm. 
the third aspect is only in the United States and other countries, there's a lack of regulation for ozone generators. So we recommend the one through Promo Life for our patients. And um, it's just important to keep that in mind when you're shopping around for home ozone generators. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, before we dive into like the great stuff about the benefits and what conditions um, we can use ozone for, there is some confusion about the word ozone, particularly for our for pollution. We hear a lot about the ozone level um, in our environment when we think about our air quality, but I want to kind of dispel that confusion because smog contains a mixture of pollutants. There um, is a small percentage of it is ozone. However, the rest of it, like hydrocarbons, nitrous oxides, particulate matter, uh, volatile organic compounds, those are more the culprits that cause a lot of problems for the human body. Mm. Um, ozone is just an easy and inexpensive way to measure the pollution. Okay. So it's a helpful tool, but you have to interpret it with, um, you know, an understanding of what you're actually measuring, what you're looking for. Um, so hopefully that's helpful for you when you talk to other people about ozone and they mention these things. So now that we talked about um, how ozone is made and the safety concerns about it and ozone with regards to smog and pollution, we're going to move to the great good stuff, which is the benefits of ozone. Sorry, one second. So when we're thinking about the benefits of ozone, we want to know where does ozone work in the body? And primarily it works in the mitochondria, which is the powerhouse of the cells. Um, oxygen comes to the cells and along with other fats, minerals, vitamins, nutrients, it all comes together in the mitochondria and churns out energy, ATP, which we all want lots of energy to be able to do all of the things in our lives. Um, and the mitochondria is about 50% of the cell mass, 10% of your body weight. The highest amount of mitochondria are usually in the heart, the kidneys, the muscles, and the brain and 20% of the body's total energy is used in the brain. So it's so important, not only for energy, but attention, focus, clarity. Um, these are all things that ozone can really help with, prim primarily at the mitochondria. So one of the things that ozone does in its benefits is increasing the efficiency and delivery of oxygen to the cells. So we wanna make sure that our body not only is receiving oxygen, but using it well. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things that cause our body to not use oxygen well. I mentioned some of them at the beginning of the talk, some of those modifiable lifestyle factors, but also things that we at Hope for Healing are detectives about to look for root causes. And that could be certain toxins, infections in the gut, heavy metals, um, gut infections, um, and things like that. Other things that can impair the use of oxygen while well are medications, injuries, trauma, um, or impaired circulation. Not only does ozone help the body and the cells use oxygen very well and deliver it, but it goes to the immune system and activates the own body's immune system to be able to do what it does just in a better way. Um, we have, when we are talking about our immune system addressing inflammation, uh, usually it starts with free radicals that are unstable atoms, and those can cause a lot of cellular damage. Mm -hmm. But our, our body and our immune system can actually take hold of those free radicals and use it for good by killing off pathogens. Mm -hmm. Pathogens would be like disease-causing organisms mm -hmm. and regulate cell growth. However, too much of a good thing, like too many free radicals, can contribute to chronic health problems like heart disease, inflammatory diseases, and cancers. Mm -hmm. So we really want our body to have a tightly controlled system with these free radicals. And we can do that through an antioxidant accident enzyme systems. We've heard a lot about antioxidants and free radicals together kind of working um, to improve our health. If your body doesn't have an adequate antioxidant enzyme system and or if it's overwhelmed with exposures that make free radicals, then you have a net effect of chronic disease. And 
in that situation, you would become very, your body typically becomes very acidotic and there's too many free radicals. So what happens when your body is acidotic? When your body is acidotic, it's in a level in which it favors um, a lot of inflammation. Mm -hmm. And so we want to just make sure that, um, well, we're looking at the root causes, but we're also doing some things that can help bring you more to a neutral. Mm -hmm. Ozone helps to activate the body's own in, um, innate or own immune system and to restore and heal. Um, like I said, it will send more healthy cytokines out so that it can use that antioxidant enzyme system. The immune system will also increase nitric oxide, which increases vascular dilation. Mm. So when your vessels dilate, yeah. you have more blood flow. Um, in that blood, you've got more oxygen nutrients going to healing. So that's super important um, when you're thinking about chronic disease. Um, and it also increases heme oxygenase one, which also allow, which lowers the vascular inflammation. Um, we know so much now with recent um, um, uh, recently with the COVID and pandemic that there's a lot of vascular inflammation that goes on with yeah. the coronavirus, but we, we've known a lot about vascular inflammation anyway with diabetes. Um, there's a lot of kind of like fire and rust in your blood vessels from um, blood sugar. So there are so many ways um, that ozone can kind of help lower that inflammation and increase blood flow. And then finally, the ozone helps the immune system by going head to head, one on one combat with these microbes like parasites, bacteria, viruses, fungi, and biotoxins. We might be very familiar with the uh, former organisms there, but biotoxin is a toxin that's released by a living thing. Mm -hmm. And that can be like mold, that would be mycotoxins, or even um, some bugs like vector-borne organisms that Dr. Brigitte talked about last month. They can mm -hmm. release toxins that can have a lot of issues with the immune system. And so what you're saying is, is that it specifically can like combat the things that are harmful to our body versus just like wiping our whole entire system out. It targets. Exactly. Exactly. I like to kind of think of ozone as like, like the special forces of the military. It's like, there's all these soldiers out there and they're doing their job, trying to keep the peace, mm -hmm. but we need like maybe sometimes the special forces to come yeah. in and do the big, the, the big job. So, um, um, that's a good analogy um, of that. Here we go. So <laughs> now that we've talked about like on a molecular level and within the body, the benefits of ozone, we'll talk about what are some conditions or situations in which ozone has been beneficial or has been seen to be beneficial or is used. Um, one of them is um, a lot of dentists will use ozone in um, for cavities or periodontal disease, mm. temporal man mandibular joint pain. Um, it was interesting when I was doing some research for this topic, I had seen that the, the brand Colgate was like, had a whole article on ozone. So I thought that was really interesting. It really streamlined, um, um, you know, toothpaste brand was discussing yeah. ozone. Um, and then definitely for aging, your oxygen utilization or the way that your body uses oxygen is one of the single most important predictors of your risk for degenerative disease and premature aging. Um, so even if, you know, you don't have a lot of like suffering or pain or illness, you know, ozone can really benefit um, for long longevity, right? Um, the other thing that um, ozone is really helpful for and has been studied in is for antibiotic resistant infections. A lot of us know that antibiotic resistance is such a big thing right now, mostly because 80% of our country's antibiotics is used towards our poultry and our meat, um, but also for overprescription of antibiotics and that other 20%. So Ozone is going to really be a game changer when trying to combat some of these. Mm -hmm. um, it's much more effective in combination, but we're also using ozone um, to treat certain like ear infections in little kiddos with just ozone alone. Mm -hmm. um, other conditions in which ozone is helpful are autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, scleroderma, rheumatoid arthritis, just to name a few. 
um, chronic disease like diabetes, heart disease, um, any kind of degenerative disease. Other studies that ozone has been helpful on is wounds, which kind of makes sense when you increase blood flow, increase healing. Um, so chronic wounds can be um, treated with ozone and even hearing loss. Um, this kind of goes along with aging, but just optimizing your health and vitality, ozone can be beneficial in that. Mm -hmm. um, we'll talk about soon the different methods of administering ozone, but we use ozone for the ear in the ears and the nose as insufflations to treat brain inflammation. Um, and a lot of brain inflammation occurs with autism, anxiety, and depression. Um, it's helpful to note that um, just doing an ear insufflation alone for somebody, a child who has autism, um, while also working on, you know, the diet, getting out gluten mm -hmm. and dairy can really improve cognition mm -hmm. and language. Right. So what you're saying, if I hear what you're saying correctly, is that it's not just a physical thing, that it also helps with like brain and like cog, like cognition. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And, and clarity and focus, kind of like what I had mentioned before, the mm -hmm. mitochondria are on all cells of our body, but 20% of that um, cell of uh, energy in the body is in the brain. And so it wow. can really benefit areas, you know, if you're targeting an area like like a wound, an infection, but even your brain. So that's amazing. Yeah, very beneficial. So now we can jump into the methods of administration. There's a lot that um, is available, which is so great because um, you know it allows it to be a tool that you can use in many different um, areas. Um, the first way is topical. Um, ozonated olive oil is a great tool to have in your first aid kit. Um, when uh, my family and I went on um, a, a vacation to the beach, my daughter got stung by a jellyfish in the morning and I was able to put ozonated olive oil on it and she was like pain-free, not complaining of all the burning um, that afternoon. And the beauty about it is it can be applied generously and as often as needed. So um, um, that's very helpful. We use Pure O3 and have that here in our office. Mm -hmm. Another method of administration topically are suppositories, um, and that can be vaginal or rectal. Glass cupping applicators, limb bagging, and even body bagging are different methods of, of topical. So what would those, the glass cupping, limb bagging, and body bag, what does that look like? Um, glass cupping is very similar to, if you've heard of cupping with like acupuncture, acupressure, maybe With some athletes reception. have, it mm -hmm. looks like that. And it's to help isolate a specific site that you're trying to treat for. Um, I think some of the studies I saw, it was helpful for like pressure ulcers in mm. a lot of older adults. Um, but it's just a method to be able to target a specific area if you have a chronic infection there. Um, and limb bagging would be like the whole limb. So um, maybe somebody that has like, peripheral vascular disease where they're not getting a lot of oxygen to their lower extremities um, or their lower legs. Um, you know, they might have some discoloration there. That can be really helpful. Um, and then there's also body bagging, but I'll talk about another method to target the body in the end, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things actually I forgot to include there is that um, ozonated olive oil can be you helpful for rashes, insect bites, cuts, scrapes. Um, you can even use it as a night cream um, to, for cosmetic purposes since it can tighten and kind of firm your skin. Wow. Um, just want to make sure I didn't I didn't miss that part. Okay, <laughs> yeah, perfect. Thank you. Not a problem. Um, okay, so we talked about topically. And now we're going to talk about oral forms of ozone. Um, we use ozonated olive oil capsules when we're treating the gut. You know, a lot of um, mm -hmm. treating the gut is super important to immune metabolism, so many aspects of our health. If yeah. we're treating somebody with H. pylori or Helicobacter pylori, SIBO, SIFO, which is small intestinal bacteria or fungal overgrowth, we can use ozonated olive oil capsules along with ozonated water. Here we go. 
Perfect. One slide at a time. Um, and then I had mentioned with the brain inflammation, the ear and nasal insufflation, and we'll demonstrate this for you. We'll have one of our clinical assistants come in and um, show you what that looks like. If that was something that you were interested in, um, you can kind of get firsthand see what that looks like. Um, and you can also use insufflation through uh, vaginally and rectally. Um, other, one of the um, anecdotes that um, we've experienced with our patients that's super successful was that um, we had a patient who had um, HPV or human papilloma virus that was noted on her pap smear, you know, that you get mm -hmm. for a well woman exam. And while um, the human papilloma virus can be eradicated by your immune system, some people cannot get rid of it with your immune system. Um, and typically if you get like a pap smear done and it's like, oh, there's HPV, then we'll just recheck it. But she wanted to be proactive in doing vaginal insufflations of ozone. Okay. Um, not all HPV strains can cause cancer, but obviously there are some that can, which is why we do the pap smears. And she did the insul ozone insufflations vaginally and was able to get rid of her, the HPV on her next pap smear. Wow. So we have this great tool um, with regards to that, because I know sometimes it's like, okay, well, I guess we'll just wait until the next time we check. You know, yeah. that's a hard time to wait mm -hmm. um, if you have something abnormal on a test. Um, there's rec also rectal insufflation of ozone, which is something that you want to do after you have a bowel movement because it can definitely prompt a bowel movement. Um, when we think about rectal ozone in comparison to what I'll soon talk about IV, we think about rectal insufflation as kind of the tortoise and the IV is the hare. Mm -hmm. So rectal can be just as effective, about 95% as effective um, as IV ozone, um, but you just might need more treatments in order to get the same effect. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to talk about um, IV administration, which um, we do here in our clinic as well. And what that looks like is a small amount of blood is removed in a syringe, and then ozone is then added to it. Um, at our clinic, we particularly will then run that um, blood through um, a three spectrums of ultraviolet light, UVA, UVB, and UVC. And that is just another mode to kind of kill off um, bugs, toxins, things that we're trying to get rid of, um, those root causes. And um, it's, it's pretty effective. We have RNs here who do it, uh, who uh, administer it here in our clinic. Um, there are some contraindications for the IV, um, and that's first trimester pregnancy, low platelets, which we check our blood counts with patients when we're doing this, mm -hmm. um, G6PD deficiency, which is a genetic um, condition in which you can't metabolize their medications, mm -hmm. hyperthyroidism, and um, severe anemia of, of unknown causes. Um, and because it's given IV and can be very powerful, we start very low and slow. Um, when I say like low, what I mean by that is there are gammas as far as like doses and the gamma has to do with how concentrated the ozone is. And it's best to start slow because when you're killing off things and you're pulling out toxins, you can have what's called a die-off or Herxheimer reaction. You can right. feel worse before you feel better. Um, and starting low and slow, even if maybe, you know, you're not super inflamed or on fire, you might be able to be higher, but it's wise to just go low and slow. And then if you do have a, have a, a poor experience with a die-off or Herx, then you want to kind of stay at that dose if you're going to go again for the next one. Ways to combat or try to prevent the die-off and Herxheimer um, experience is making sure that you have an adequate antioxidant um, support. Again, the antioxidants meet the free radicals and they can kind of pull them all out together and take care of them. Um, and so that's why in our clinic, you know, we recommend if you're doing ozone, you pair it with an IV with high dose vitamin C and glutathione. Um, and that can really set you up well for a better experience together. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So I know you kind of touched on it, but could you go into just yeah. a little more detail about like, if I have a Herx, I mean, I, I, so I've had a Herxheimer reaction, um, and 
it can feel like I'm dying. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like it it can be, it can be a lot. And so can you kind of talk through ways that we help prevent those things from Mm -hmm. happening and just what it is, like what is happening to my body? Okay. That's a great question. So, you know, when we're talking with patients and trying to personalize and individualize their care plan, um, and these treatments, you know, we can get an idea if there is going to be some degree of die off or Herxheimer. Sometimes it's like, oh yes, when I took that supplement or if I started trying to methylate too early, um, I can have an idea of how slowly I need to go or how prepared I need to be with a patient. Um, and so that can mean definitely, you know, doing the IV therapy following Mm -hmm. or even having, um, what we call like kind of like a rescue, um, botanical, like Berber Pinella, um, another one that we use for die off, um, or, um, Herxheimer's or Alka-Seltzer Gold. Yeah. You know, you asked me about the acidosis and that will help, you know, balance you back out to neutral. So, um, those are kind of all ways that you can prepare. Um, you can sometimes do the best preparation that you can, and you just never know how the patient's going to respond. So that's why low and slow is great. Our registered nurses will check out the patient, making sure that everything is fine, communicate to the healthcare providers if we need to make any adjustments or add anything in. Um, but essentially what's happening is everything is dying off and coming out. And what I like to think of it is like, it's the, if, especially if you're treating like vector born or a mold illness, mm-hmm. some of those bugs like to do their last hurrah before they die off their last party, you yes, know, absolutely. fanfare, um, which is so frustrating for patients, um, which is why we like to try to stay with you and, Yes. Um, you know, be available for those things. Absolutely. I do know that like our, our RNs will check in on our patients, especially if it is your first time to kind of gauge it. We never really know when or if a Herx is going to happen. And so that's why we monitor you so closely. Um, but also I think it is one of those, the hard things of knowing like this is beneficial, but I think what we would all know is like, no one loves like are, we love doing a juice cleanse, but that feeling that you get during a juice cleanse is very similar. It's just because this is so powerful. Yeah. You feel that feeling much sooner if there are things that your body needs to do. Yeah. Like on a lower level, you know, when we do the ear and nasal insulations yep. today, we've oh. got our tissues because we yeah. know things are just going to be coming out. Um, and low. that's not going to be pleasant, no. but we know that, you know, everything's dying off in there. Yeah. Um, especially because our nose is like, you know, God knows how much and what goes through there and kind of mm-hmm. protects us. Um, so I think I answered your question. Yes, I think another absolutely. point though is, and we have these in the instructions and the nurses do such a great job of making sure, even our even our clinical staff does a great job in making sure patients eat, get a good meal um, and um, making sure that they're preparing them well to set them up for success. Absolutely. Oh, and then the final point I wanted to talk about was um, ozone with sauna. So um, many of us know the benefits of sauna. It helps to kind of soothe your nerve endings, warm, relaxes muscles, helps release endorphins. Um, There is a method that you can go into this little like sauna box. So it's it's, it's closed around you. They put a towel so that you're not inhaling any of the ozone, but you've got the heat and the benefits of the sauna. Again, increased blood flow, sweating will detoxify. Certain heavy metals and toxins will only get out through the sweat. And then you add the ozone. So it's like, you know, two is better than either one alone sometimes. Um, So it's pretty powerful. The ozone helps activate what's called the dendritic cells, the little immune cells within your your skin. And um, that will help them to work more efficiently. Um, Again, same thing, low and slow. If it's done too rapidly, you can kind of have too much coming out all at once. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I've had um, some patients say that they, when they went and they had that that done, they could look down and like on the towel they were sitting in was like all black. Yeah, things that have come out and things like that. So they also, so I've done it several times. They also will have you wear, because of what you were talking about, not letting it out. They also give you oxygen uh, frequently to ensure that you are, Inhaling the oxygen, oxygen, not yes. the ozone to support your system. And not only not inhaling the ozone, but 
if ozone increases oxygen delivery and using oxygen efficiently, you need oxygen. Yes. <laughs> so, so it helps, it's like a double whammy, you know what I mean? It helps the, the body do its job, but you got to give it the uh, materials to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so let me, I'll go over this and then we'll do the, um, and so this still um, no, just this last one. Oh, I would want to this Perfect. Okay. So, you know, in summary, you know, ozone is such a powerful tool among many that we have. Um, I had mentioned earlier in the presentation, some of the things that steal away the optimal use of oxygen. Um, but those same things can also when done well, um, really help um, so along with ozone. Um, and so the book that um, we use is, um, which I'll show in the last slide and we can put kind of like in the notes of this um, is um, the ozone miracle. And he uses a, a great analogy of a train. So, you know, your body is, you can think of your body as a train, wherever your train is going to, whether it's um, what goals you have for your health, your wellness, your vitality, whether it's to be at your child or grandchild's wedding, or to be able to travel, or to be just, you know, be able to, um, you know, have, live a long, healthy, great quality life. Um, there's different cars in each train and ozone is just one of those you know you need food as medicine I have um here my as like an example to illustrate my children's car, train cars so one of the trains is food as medicine so you know you need those fats minerals vitamins amino acids hormones in order along with the oxygen for the mitochondria to produce energy you need movement whether that's you know high intensity interval training strength training um, if you're very sick, you want to be cautious about that and do a case by case basis on the movement. Um, adequate sleep is another car in the train, stress management um, and re relaxation, your relationships. And again, the functional therapies like ozone um, that we talked about today are all powerful tools um, to kind of get your train where you need, where you want to go. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So are we good? Yes. Oh, and just so y'all can see. We did oh, yes. Food. These are the resources um, that are really helpful. The Ozone Miracle is a very easy read. So if you want to dig deeper into the ozone um, and look at that, if you want to be a little bit nerdy like me and um, check out some of the literature on ozone, the American Academy of Ozone Therapy um, is a great resource. And then also the Madrid Declaration. So you can see all of those there and we'll include links. Absolutely. Okay. Um, let's stop sharing. Oops, sorry. Okay, so we have the lovely Lauren here. Um, Lauren is one of our clinical assistants, and she's going to be here to do ozone, in so ear and nose insufflation. Mm -hmm. Um, but we also, because all of the amazing things that Tony was talking about, um, I wanted to show you some of the things that she was talking about that we already had in office that if you want to try. So, um, and actually Tony, just real quick, yeah, um, is this what you're, the yeah, that's the ozonated olive oil, um, that you can use and you can kind of see what it looks like. It's like a clear, clear gel. Oh, I can't open it. That's okay. It's like a clear gel. Yeah. Oh, yep. There it is. It's like a clear gel. Um, so it's not anything very obvious. Um, again, you can use it as a night cream or like a, something to have in your first aid kit. Yes. And this is Ozone. This is like for tooth and gum support. So mm -hmm. kind of what she was saying here. Let me see if I can like see it. Um, and so this is, you would just put it on after and then here. The, the yes, the ozonated olive oil capsules. Um, you can see here. Um, it's super helpful. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. So do we have the, do we have the bag too or no? Oh, perfect. Okay. Sweet. All the goodies. Okay. <laughs> so I don't want to open this up or, um, actually no, because I'll use one. Um, this, <laughs> we can describe it. So this is the, an ozone bag for, and then here's the catheter. Yep. For the IV. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, so this is one of the, the things that you would see um, in the clinic um, if you were to do it. And yeah. this is the catheter that you can use as well. And then this is the limb bag here. I'll open this up while you do it. So yeah, that is for rectal and vaginal insufflation. So you would fill the bag up and we can actually do that in a little bit. Um, 
you would fill the bag up and insert in either um, the butt or the vagina. And then this, and this is the limb bag. So you can kind of see, you can yeah. put your entire limb or arm leg inside to be able to get the ozone um, in a very isolated spot. <laughs> okay, so just wanted to show you all of the different things. It's also not nearly as scary as it sounds sometimes, so. Okay, let's get started. So Lauren, if you wouldn't mind walking us through. Yeah, absolutely. Let me skip part over a little bit just so that sure. it's a little bit more easily accessible for all of us. Okay, so um, installations are something that we do often at the office. Um, we are constantly rotating through ear and nose or just ears for pediatrics. Um, kids have to be able to hold their breath to be able to do um, the nasal, so we often do just ears on them, but for adults, we do ear and uh, nasal both, and so for, I like to start off with doing the ears first. It's typically the very easiest. I'm going to have you go ahead and take this. This is olive oil. You're just going to coat the inside of your ears with it. We use olive oil rather than water because the inside of the ears is warm. Um, that helps the molecules of the ozone to actually stick in the area. Now, we could use water, but we would have to reapply every single time because, like I said, inside of the body is warm. The water will evaporate. So in between each pass, you would have to reapply. You don't with the, um, the olive oil. Okay. Um, and that actually does because, um, again, body is warm. You'll feel it when I'm pushing the ozone in, so you'll have a warm sensation. So it's actually quite pleasant I doing. Like, I like that feeling. Yeah, <laughs> it's actually quite pleasant feeling. And so we have a syringe that we use for this. I'm only going to do one time each ear for you, but typically we do three for both sides. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and get this started. We start at a very low dose for everyone. Um, just turn this on here, and the syringe fills up all on its own. Can they see it? Yeah. Maybe not. There we go. Oh, stretching it. I think we're good. Yeah, you can see. Sorry that I am. No, you're okay. <laughs> all right, and then I'm going to turn this off. All right. So what do I do? So you're just going to sit still. I'm going to go ahead and move your ear the hair out of your ear. I'm going to insert right into the ear canal and I'm going to insert just a little bit of ozone. And then when I pull away, you're going to cover the ear and count to 10. One, two. And again, three, like I said, while she's four, counting, five, um, I'm just over here in the corner. It's okay. It's okay. Um, no worries. Um, is um, we use about five to six treatments of these ear insufflations for kids who have ear infections, um, and we've had a lot of great success with um, using ozone alone um, for ear infections for kids rather than antibiotics. Um, so that's helpful. But again, it could be used for brain inflammation, anxiety, depression. Um, upper respiratory symptoms. So I already see some people in the chat talking about yes. how much they like to use it when um, having, you know, any kind of upper respiratory symptom coming on. Okay. And so you're saying that we would do that three times each side. Yes. Okay. Let's off again. So I'm going to do the exact same dose for your nose. Um, so very low dose. Now, with the nose, um, I'm going to have you plug the opposite side because as Tony said earlier, it is a irritant to the lungs. So you're going to plug the opposite side so that the ozone doesn't leak out of your nose. You're going to take a deep breath so that you can hold it. Yep, plug that side and then hold your breath this entire time. I'm going to push in slowly because it might burn just a little bit. And again, that's why we say for that, Lauren was saying for kids, sometimes it's hard for okay. them to Plug and hold for 10, do this kind of coordination where you're holding and holding your breath and things like that. Um, so that's the main reason why we don't do a whole lot of nasal insufflation for younger kids. But if your child is able to do that, then um, you can do nasal insufflation. Right. Okay. And then we'll do the opposite side. So take a deep breath in. Plug it. Here we go. Almost done. I think the hardest part is holding your breath, but um, 
And then you just breathe out slowly. I've also had patients who, you know, they have trouble, they travel very frequently and they have trouble with the pressure from the fluid behind the eardrum when you're on an airplane. So sometimes they'll come to get it done before, you know, they go on a, on the airplane or a long flight. So that can be really helpful in decreasing the fluid behind the eardrum. Yeah. And Absolutely. typically we, we do three times for both sides of the nostrils as well. Absolutely. And then yes, have tissues handy. Yes. <laughs> Checks maybe what about like, um, five, 10 minutes, depending on how yeah. cooperative maybe the kiddo is. Right. Yeah. yeah. Ears are very quick. I say like typically at 10 to 15 for the first time for someone doing nasal, just to like walk them through the steps and get yeah. them accustomed to it. But after that, it's pretty breezy five to 10, I would say for nasal too, after that. Yeah. That's yes. awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very easy administration. If you were to have a home ozone generator mm -hmm. and things like that, and once you get the hang of it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And the ones that we recommend also we have instructions for so you're correct. not we're not sending you in blind right correct um to go like oh just go for it no there are instructions and a lot of videos and I think someone life has a lot of videos that are great resources yes so, yeah 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 I was like I haven't seen this <laughs> But thank you so much, Lauren. We are thank super you. grateful for her. She also brought in all of these amazing things. So that's why I was like texting her. I was like, I need all of these things. I forgot to grab. So, okay. So to answer some of the questions that are coming in, um, first off, we just love that you love it. I know that somebody just said, hey, we love our ozone generator and the recommendations that we need to give in because it's really helped them um, making ozone water daily yes, ozone to water, treat that. To treating treat. the gut. Yeah. Um, what else? They're bubbling through oil. Yeah, for um, Marcos. So that's, that's, yeah. that's actually something I didn't mention. So I'm so glad that they commented about that is, you know, while ozone is an irritant to the lungs, you can bubble it to turn it into a vapor, um, which changes its molecular form through olive oil, and that can be inhaled. So some kids, you know, they're like, oh, don't shoot anything up my nose, yeah, you know, absolutely. that might be a method that um, works well. Um, there's also like a stubborn bug in the nose that we treat for patients who might have like mold illness or SIRS or biotoxin illness, um, and have found that ozone has been the most effective. Um, usually mm -hmm. when we treat with that, before we used ozone, we use a nasal spray that has some silver in it and a biofilm buster, um, which can be effective, but there are some stubborn bugs out there. Um, yeah. so we've had, um, a woman who she had seven swabs, and seven treatments of the nasal sprays and we just couldn't get rid of that bug and she did um 15 treatments of the ear and nose um ozone and it was gone that's so amazing. it's pretty powerful um tool Yay. for us that's amazing okay so kids with ear tubes cannot do um ear insufflation is that correct yes yeah, so one of the things is we want to make sure that the tympanic membrane or the ear drum is not ruptured prior to um, doing ozone. So, you know, whether it's with a healthcare provider, um, not in our clinic, like recently, if you can, you know, you can make sure that there is an intact tympanic membrane. Um, you just want to make sure um, that that's the case. And then we usually will do an ear recheck to make sure that um, everything is intact um, in the middle of the treatments as well. But yeah, to, but to answer your question, no, we do not recommend ozone for mm -hmm. um, children with ear tubes um, or tubes in the ears. Um, so did you say that hyperthyroid is a contraindication for IV ozone? Mm -hmm. No, it's um, hyperthyroid. Um, so more of a revved up high metabolite metabolism thyroid um and that's more if it's uncontrolled so people who do have hyperthyroidism and it is controlled you know that's not a contraindication a lot of those things are more you want to be cautious with it if you have anemia even if it's severe anemia if we know the cause um and um we're able to be cautious with it you can still do IV ozone absolutely um this person asked can you also include the ug slash ml mm -hmm. you start with for treatment are you in in regards to which yeah, of the treatments? I can answer that. Okay. Yeah. So there's a, it's a whole spectrum and it depends on the age. It depends on what uh, method of administration you're using. Mm -hmm. Um, but with a lot of our patients that we see, if they have a home ozone generator, then we can provide, um, those dosings for them, depending on again, the weight, um, the method and things like that. 
Uh, so when they said UG slash ML, that is a method of concentration. Another method that's synonymous with that is gamma. So you might see those. Um, and again, in that the ozone miracle, it clarifies all those things. That book also has some dosing in it if you wanted to take a look at that. Um, so that's another resource for you as far as um, where to start with the gamma or the UG slash ML. Uh, do you see scabbing in the ear? This happens for my, um, in the ear canal. Yeah, sometimes there can be, you know, when we talked about the nasal insufflation, how everything starts coming out, um, depending on the frequency, you can do up to four times a week, um, the ear and the nasal insufflation. But like I said, low and slow and depending on what's going on there. Um, you know, the ear canal, the nasal canal, all these little like orifices of our bodies are all dark and a lot of things like to grow there. So it depends on what's going on. You might need to, if you're having symptoms like that, um, you might want to pull back on the frequency or lower on the gamma, again, low and slow, um, in order to be able to um, optimize the, the ozone. Awesome. Yeah. Um, do you use this for high cholesterol and some blockage in the cor um, coronary arteries? Yes, definitely. So like I said, one of the mechanisms that ozone helps with is increasing nitrous oxide that does vascular dilation. So it opens the blood vessels, but also increases heme oxygenase one, an enzyme that is super important for vascular inflammation. When we think about high cholesterol and blockages in um, the coronary arteries, um, you know, cholesterol is like a smooth, round mo uh, molecule. And our vessels are typically, when healthy, smooth. And so they can go through there fine. But when you have inflammation and things that are sticky and on fire, that's when those smooth, um, those smooth molecules will stick to things and cause impaired circulation. So lowering inflammation through a lot of things like the lifestyle um, stuff that we talked about, um, along with ozone, can help with those situations. Absolutely. Okay. So I have some more questions here. Is this the same ozone that biologic dentists use for cleaning out root canals? Yes, yes, it is the same ozone. There's really just one ozone because the other interesting thing that they talked about in the book is that ozone can't be patentable because it's just oxygen molecule, you know? Absolutely. So it's, um, it's the only triple oxygen molecule. Mm -hmm. um, is ozone a tool used for detoxing the body? Yes. So we talked a lot about that, whether it's, you know, gut infections, heavy metals, mold, vector borne illness. Um, it can help remove a lot of those. You just want to make sure you're doing it, you know, safely because you might have the die off in Herx. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, can slash should ozone be done if living or staying in a home with potential mold mm -hmm. or mito, um, mycotoxins? Or mm -hmm. should one wait until they're 100% in the clear as far as environment goes? Oh, that's a great question. So, you know, ozone, um, whether it's the insufflations or the IV, it is a it is an investment. And we at Hope for Feeling really stress a clean environment, um, particularly your home. Um, and so it doesn't make sense for us for you to invest in ozone if you're still living in a place that's, you know, with mold. Um, and so it's better, better used to use your resources there. Um, before we recently had um, bought a house and one of the um, inspectors had even also offered for like everybody out of the home for the home to be ozonated. Um, so that's a, a great tool as well to kind of decrease the microbes. You can also use ozone, which we didn't talk about mostly because this is for the safety of like um, human um, clinical significance, but you can also use like ozone generators to help clean your um, your dishwasher, your laundry, your fridge to help keep food um, fresh longer. So there's a whole nother topic about that. Other <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So this is a multi- Did I answer question. that question? Yes. Okay. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. go on <laughs> tangent sometimes and I'm like, no, I you're good. Yeah. You? no, this one just came in long. So that's why I was like, you were answering it perfectly. Okay. I just wanted to get to the fullness of what this question was saying. Um, so Overall, we can kind of go into speaking it, but I really think this person broke down this question really well. So overall, the question is, can uh, um, speaking about ozone with other treatments, supplements, food, and aspects, but for example, like if I put on 
topical ozone? How long should I wait mm. to get in the shower? Maybe going swimming or if I'm going to get like wet, like first, let's start there. Yeah. Yeah. Well. So I like that question because it's a great question. You're thinking all the things about like, how can I care for myself best? Yeah. Um, but the great thing about ozone compared to maybe other things like topical hormones or like uh, even topical medications is that I, that's kind of splitting hairs. You know, I think that because ozone can be applied so generously, um, you can put it on. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. You can put it on perfect. again after you get out of the shower. Awesome. Um, <laughs> also, in addition to that, drinking ozonated water, mm -hmm. should I do it on an empty stomach versus with supplements, food binders are the same time? What yes. That like? That's a great question too. Um, so ozonated water, I would say that, you know, if you're trying to be very particular because, you know, you're treating some kind of gut infection, you have really bad symptoms. Yes. Keep it away from, obviously you're ready keeping it away from binders because binders are away from other things anyway, but definitely probiotics. You know, if it's going to kill off certain bugs, you don't want it to kill off some of the good bugs. Um, but, um, you know, if it's, becoming a, an issue where you're not taking it at all because you're trying to separate all the things, then maybe it's, it, it's, it's again, not a huge concern when you're taking, if you're taking it all together versus not taking it at all. Right. Um, unless you're, um, treating something very particular and severe. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So my kids are members at Hope for Healing, but if my husband wanted to do ozone, how does this work? Does he have to be a patient there? Yes. Did you want to answer this? Yeah, or do you want me to yeah sure. Um, so we do do non-patient ozone. So let's talk about IV ozone because for non-patients, we do like adult non-patient uh, ozone. So we do it, but we do have you set down and have an appointment with a provider to go over a uh, contraindications to check your ears, to check, like to do all the things that we need to ensure that um, it is safe. And I know you talked about a CBC, so we yes. do check the blood levels um, or you can bring one in with your, whoever your provider is within three months. Mm -hmm. um, and we can go off of that as well. But again, it's really just to be safe, to kind of walk you through to answer your questions, but also to ensure that, that it is a safe thing for you. And so you'll fill out this huge questionnaire and just to make sure, again, everything about this is safety, but yeah. it's not too terribly long in comparison to all of our other, since you are, had felt out our patient forms, it's mainly just specifically about contraindications. Mm -hmm. um, do we have a price point for that? I don't have our prices in front of us right now, yeah. um, but I can specifically I will be posting about it, but actually I'm so glad you asked that right now because we do have a sale going on for the month of October for that first initial visit, or if you want to get a package of five, um, and, or a package of, where was the sheet? Sorry. Um, this is the yes, one here I we go. <laughs> yes, no, you're fine. You're fine. Um, so you'll have a new to ozone, which will include the visit and also your first ozone package. And that first package will be 359 for this month and as well as November. And then we'll also have packages of five at a discounted rate and packages of 15 at a discount rate, but we'll be posting all of that. We wanted to you first and foremost before we tried to sell anything to you at all we really just wanted you to know more about it and so if you just keep watching um one if you are members you can look at Mighty Networks and you'll see all of the information about the sales too. We'll be posting it on social media after this presentation about the ways that you can connect. If you do want to do ozone through us, which we would love to have you, we just feel like, um, I just, I can't talk enough about our team when going through this process, me and Caitlin Tate, which is our functional therapies lead, went and looked to see what was out there to ensure that we were doing the best for our patients by the, putting this in our practice. And we just have seen just the way that our RNs care for our patients. And especially because it can, um, like if you've never Herx before, that can be a really shocking experience, but to be able to minimize that as well as walk mm -hmm. you through what they can do. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I feel like our team is equipped with so many amazing yeah. tools to be able to help you. Yeah. Um, and our members also, right, get a, if you're yes. a member with Hope for Healing, you get a discount for ozone. 
Um, so keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, we've been really amazed and so excited to have ozone as part of one of our therapies. Um, sometimes, you know, in our like provider meetings, we surprise ourselves like, oh, we can do ozone for that, you know? And um, um, yeah, we probably onboarded that like a couple, like right before, I think I went on maternity leave, right? Like yeah. about, about six months ago or mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Maybe more than that, but um, it's been very helpful. Is your nose running now? Yes, it is. I'm sorry. I know. <laughs> Maybe that's just like, time to <laughs> so it's like, it's, it's starting. I promise yeah. you guys, I'm not sick. It's just the other oh, zone. God. It's trying to cleanse my body. Um, in addition to that, though, I think um, it's really important to also know, just if there's anybody else listening, that you don't have to be a patient to be a member. Mm -hmm. And so that's mm -hmm. really cool. So if you're kind of on the fence, you're like, I'm not sure if I really want to dive into this fully, I would totally suggest um, setting up a free welcome call with one of our health coaches um, to be able to walk you through. But one of our entry points would be just membership. So you want access to these events. Like this event was free because we really felt like it was important to educate mm -hmm. everyone about what this is because I think um, it's being talked about a lot in a way and we just wanted to make sure that the, the information y'all had was accurate um, but two like there are other events so later on this month I'll be talking with one of our health coaches Anne about mindset matters and why it matters and how to like really shape our mindset but that event is $20 but that is free for members so if you want to be a member you also get discounts on supplements you get discounts on IV you and know, any of our so, functional therapies yeah. mm -hmm. and so anyway it is a really great deal, even if you aren't currently a patient and if you're still on the fence, it's a really good introductory point into our practice to be able to kind of get all this. This will be in Mighty Network. Mm -hmm. So the presentation you're having here, um, which is a member benefit, as well as every presentation that we've had since we've launched Mighty Networks. So, Sounds good. Thanks so exciting. much for yes. um, Letting me um, share this hour at this lunch hour with you guys. Absolutely. You all have a, I'm just checking. Oh, wait, hold on. Sorry. Um, there was more questions. I'm so sorry. We didn't see those. Mm -hmm. Will ozone therapy be available at the new location? Um, by the yeah. way, any set launch date for the new location. <laughs> so Tony, super yes. excited that you're yes. asking about the new location because Tony will be at the new location. Yes, I'm excited just as you're as eager for the yes. new location. Um, that's going to be on Bin Street, two or three blocks from um, the Children's Museum. And it's kind of looking like the end of the year, maybe the beginning of next year, but yeah. Ozone and IV will be offered. Absolutely. Um, I'll be one of the healthcare providers down there. Um, and I think the same person asked about um, protocols for cleaning household items, food, hot tubs. Um, yeah, you know, we can get that resource out to you. Um, we'll put something yeah, together. we'll put something in there because you're right. His book, Dr. Schallenberger's book, The Ozone Miracle that I mentioned, um, does not address that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, while you guys enjoy the rest of your day, I will be visiting the Kleenex box, most of mine. So y'all have a wonderful time. And again, thank you so much Bye. for joining us. Bye. Bye.